And You're thanks, welcome. Thanks for saving Dana White's life. <laughs> <laughs> th- that's what he credits. He credits talking to you and taking your advice as completely changing his life, and now he feels infinitely better. Yeah. I mean, he did a lot of the work himself. Well, he had to, but you had to tell him what to do, but luckily he listened. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think giving him a life expectancy just kind of validated it for him. It just really put it in his face. Uh-huh. And yeah. the funny thing is, you know, uh, when you go back and you look at the pictures of him prior to oh yeah he does kind of look like he was about to pop you know it's not good yeah <laughs> he had a big old moon face and he was you like know the veins up on the forehead and the veins out of the side of the neck thick. like how did the conversation start so we have a mutual friend um named carrie Kasem. she took the same test that that, that dana white did it was life-changing for her and she was like what is this test it's a genetic test it looks at um genetic methylation pathways so methylation pathways methylation pathways. What's that word mean? so think about it like this um you know we pull crude oil out of the ground right mm-hmm. but but you can't put crude oil into your gas tank right because the car doesn't understand that fuel source so what happens is crude oil has to be refined into gasoline and then the car can run okay so in human beings there's a similar process called methylation there's not a single compound known to mankind not one There's no vitamin, no mineral, no amino acid, no nutrient, no protein, no nutrient of any kind that enters the human body and is used in the format that we put it in. Without a single exception, everything we put into our bodies has to be refined into the usable form. If you can't make this conversion, you have a deficiency. It's this deficiency that leads to the most common ailments that we suffer from. Mm. So that process is called methylation, and there are several genes that govern it. Um, This is where a lot of the misconception about genetically inherited disease comes from. It's rarely the disease that's passed from generation to generation. What we pass from generation to generation is the inability to refine a raw material, which causes a deficiency, which leads to that disease and what generally leads to hypertension so um if you look at um dana white's case right is a perfectly uh common case if you have an impaired ability to break homocysteine down right to take that amino acid homocysteine and convert it into a harmless amino acid called methionine if you can't make this conversion homocysteine rises it starts to irritate the artery it actually reduces the arteries Um, elasticity and can even cause it to constrict think about it 85% of all hypertensive diagnosis diagnosis of of high blood pressure um, primary hypertension or essential hypertension are idiopathic right unknown origin and so what we do is we take people that have high blood pressure we do all these cardiovascular tests and they all come out normal yet the person still has high blood pressure and that's largely because the high levels of homocysteine are causing vascular narrowing. I mean, this is a fixed system, right? So if I make the pipes smaller in a fixed system, pressure goes up. So in in Dana's case, he he had one of the highest levels of homocysteine that I'd personally ever seen and our clinical team had seen. So when you say high blood pressure, could you define, like, I'm I'm not good at that. Whenever I get my blood pressure, they tell me the number and they say it's good. I go, okay. So I don't know, what's a good number? So um, 120 over 70, 120 over 80. And what's high? 130, 140, 150, 160. When does it get dangerous? 140, 150 starts to get dangerous. People walk around at 140, 150, 160 all the time. 